83% of small businesses fail within the first three years for one big reason, and that is they do not understand the numbers. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Passive Money. I'm Kirby. That's Alex over there. See, now we got the pointing down <laughs> pat. I think that's about the only thing we got down pat over here. But, um, <laughs> but uh, welcome to the channel again. Uh, today, we're talking about small businesses. Why 83% of small businesses fail within the first three years. Like Alex said in the pretext, it's because of this one simple thing. They don't know the numbers. But with all that said, before we, you know, I give my, uh, you know, my stand on a soapbox reason. Alex, what are your reasons that you believe that small business fail? Um, well, aside from what we just mentioned, that they don't understand the numbers. Um, I think people think that uh, once they, people like titles, I believe. And so once right. they open up a business, they want to profoundly you know, say that they have a LLC or a corporation, um, mm -hmm. that exact company or whatever isn't generating any money. They have an idea, right. they open up an LLC, and they have yet to take action to create revenue for the company. Um, most people either fall in that trap and then the company just never makes any money, or I also see people uh, create a company and they're spending more than they are making or they're mm -hmm. getting into the company funds. Uh, they've left their, say their nine to five job or something or left another revenue source focused on this and they're trying to live off of it while building it and it's just crumbling apart. Yeah, uh, I agree with all those. So for the first part, uh, titles. Yeah, everybody want to know, want to know uh, titles, want to have titles. I remember... Um, I'm not, I'm not going to disrespect him like that. Cause I don't remember the year, but when the, uh, rapper Nipsey Hussle passed and then he came out with this album, uh, that was like the most LLCs ever created in the, you know, African-American community. But that's all that was created was LLCs. LLC, anybody can create an LLC. LLC is, you know, a couple of dollars, come up with a name, LLC created, you know? Maybe, I mean, if you smart, you know, open up a business account, that's anybody can do that. But a business is not a business until it generates revenue, generates revenue and in turn generates a profit. But people get consumed with the titles, like you said, with the, uh, oh, I'm I'm an owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm this. And I know many of people in the business landscape or they think they're in the business landscape. They come out and say, yeah, I got an LLC for this. I got this business. What did the business do? Oh, uh, uh, as soon as you ask them what the business do, there's no mission statement for the business. It's just, uh, we doing this and this and this. We doing that and that. All right. So where's the revenue? And then, of course, you got people that have an LLC that think it's, it's just a one-all catch-all that can do everything, you know, and, and that's funny. But people don't understand that the business aspect of all it is or what they're trying to derive from it is just a status symbol to say they're a business owner. Me, I'd rather not say I'm a business owner at all and just collect money. I'd rather, and I've had this, I've had people say they've owned my businesses, but and then everybody that, you know, was associated with the business or anything like that or employees of the business, they was upset that the people was doing it. Then they called me and then they said, this, people, this person is running around the city saying that they own, you know, the company. And I said, so where do the checks go? And then, uh, and then, and then they were like, so you're not mad? I'm like, as long as the checks come to me, anybody can say whatever they want. I got the paperwork to say the truth. So I don't care to have a status symbol to say, oh yeah, I'm this, I'm that. Only thing I care about is the revenue that comes in and make sure the revenue exceeds expenses and the profit goes in my pocket. That's it. But people are worried about everything else and and not the things that's important. Uh, for the second part, for the second part, the numbers, the numbers aspect of it, that is the number one thing. People, they have passion and they have emotions about businesses. And the one I would point out, I'm always going to bring up the food industry. The only reason why I'm bringing that up because somebody gave me an elevator pitch uh, on Friday. And then they come up with this thing that say, hey, I want to open up I'm not going to talk about this business that was pitched to me on Friday, but they'll say, hey, I want to open up a restaurant. Let's just call it a burger restaurant. I want to open up a burger restaurant and sell burgers for $5. So 
So you already know what you're going to charge them, but you don't know if that number is even a profit for you to charge them that. You have to get a lot of other nuances in there before that, like labor costs, fixed costs, you know, operation costs, cost of goods. Those things are important to see how much is going to cost for you to create that one burger. That's including packaging, POS machines, employees, hourly wage, utilities, rent. All that has to go into the price of what it costs you to create one burger to know what you're going to charge somebody for so you can have a profit margin. But if you come with, I'm charging them $5 no matter what. If it costs you $8 to create the burger and you're charging them $5, that means you're losing $3 per burger. But nobody dies into the numbers of it because numbers is the only thing a business is. Revenue, profits, losses, that's the business. Whatever you're doing in the, mid in the meantime to create that stuff, that's great. But the numbers is what's going to make the business thrive, succeed, and go on to the future. Alex, what you got to say about it? No, um, yeah, I remember you had told me a story like this um, about someone making or wanting to make kind of some kind of sandwich. But yeah, it's it's absolutely true. I, I've always heard that the restaurant business is very difficult to actually uh, succeed in. Uh, it's very thin margins. Very thin margins. Yeah, very, very small margins. Um, yeah, and that's that just goes to show you, you know, you have to understand the financials. A lot of people they forget to account for all the extra expenses, the, like you said, the utilities, the rent, uh, labor costs, taxes, it's, it's everything, you know, it's all those bills, supplies, everything that is involved, not just, not just what the product costs and then you selling it. It's all the outside expenses as well. That fact right. that has to be factored in. And, um, you have to have that kind of, you have to know what your, uh, what your, I, I would say you need to know what your expenses are before trying to price uh, burgers, you know, and nowadays, yeah, burgers are, yeah, nowadays burgers are going for like $9. That's why I don't eat right. out anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We know, we know you don't eat out because you think thinking of like Wendy's or something. You go, you go to one of these fancy joints, you're going to be like 13 bucks. But yeah. So, but yeah, so eat, like going to that same concept, like, they believe the cost, the cost of the burger is all right. So the burger I want to charge five dollars and the the patty that I'm gonna, you know, outsource or beef I'm gonna outsource cost, let's say a dollar, right? And then they be like, okay, so that's a four dollar profit. No, you still got buns, lettuce, ketchup, tomatoes, all the other, you know, toppings that you might want to put on there, the packaging that the burger goes in, including after you wrap the burger, you got to put it in a bag. That's a cost too. So you need to know how much it costs per bag, per item, all this stuff. You need to break that stuff down and know your total cost and, you know, including the labor and everything else. And then once you find that number, so let's say that number comes up to 615. And then after that, you, you're shooting for a profit margin of 25%. So the price of the burger has to be at least 25% over what it costs you to create that product. That's how business works. Not just, oh, I'm a real good cook and I just want to cook for everybody. Okay, that's fine. Well, find somebody that knows the numbers before you go jump off a ledge and then you would have spent all this money getting a you know a physical restaurant or getting a, uh, a cooking truck or something like that. And then next thing you know, at the end of the month, you're always in the red, but you can still say, I own a business. But that I own a business stuff is not going to pay the bills. It's, people are not, only people that's going to admire that is people that don't know no better. You can't go to a bank and say, oh, I own a business. The first thing they're going to say is, show me your profit and loss statement. That's what they're going to ask for. Exactly. You can't reach out to, if you reach out to investors for investments, they're going to say, show me your numbers. They're not going to just say, oh, because you, you know, stand up and say, oh, I'm a business owner. They're going to believe you in the real business world. Now, you know, in the small corners of the world where people don't know no better and you can just throw out, I got an LLC and people like, ooh and I, LLC costs you about a hundred bucks. Anybody can get one. It's for everybody in the, you know, YouTube world here, that's all it costs. It's, it's nothing special. So that's one of the main things. And the other main thing is one thing that I think uh, hurt businesses and you said it, you said it, uh, people 
get a job and then they get that LLC and think they created a business. They already have a job, you know, taking care of the family and then they create that business and they think, oh, just because I have an LLC, just because I'm opening the doors that I can quit my mainstream of income with no revenue going. The process that you have to have in that element is you have to make, I say 2.5 times here in profit than what you're making at the company you're working for before you just be like, all right, I'm done with the company. Because in business, it's going to be good times. It's going to be cycles. It's going to be bad times. And if you have enough money and profit, because sometimes the profit is not going to be the same number like a paycheck from a job. It's not going to be the same number every week, every month, because stuff is going to come up. Fryers going to go down. Fire department going to come. Inspections. Everything happens. If it's if something can go wrong in business, it will go wrong. And you got to have the capital to fund everything that goes wrong. So your profit number is not going to be the same every month. So people leaving their jobs to just say, oh, I start a business. They usually they usually fail. That's why the number is so high. Eighty three percent of small businesses fail because these things that me and Alex was talking about is the things that they overlook and don't pay attention to. And the last one, I remember. Uh, I gave I gave a, a young lady an opportunity in my commercial building down there in Texas. She wanted to open up a tattoo, a tattoo shop. And I tried to be a mentor just over the phone. She wanted to open up the shop. But I wanted, you know, I'm asking the business questions and stuff like that, you know, because I wanted her business to succeed. And, you know, I could see she was a little fidgety, didn't know the numbers. And I'm telling her, like, you need to know the numbers. But I'm, you know. I'm thinking a little greed on my part, but I'm thinking maybe she has a big following and that's why she thinks she's going to be successful in the tattoo business. So I let her lease out a space in the, uh, one of my buildings. She decked it out. It looked amazing. Come to find out the only people she tattooed was family members inside of her garage. So once the business opened, nobody showed up because she didn't have you know, the advertising, the brand recognition, nothing. Nobody knew who she was. And then for, you know, this went on, she was paying the uh, rent and stuff like that for months. But of course, I know other businesses inside of there, even though I'm in Florida and it's in Texas. And I was asking them, what is the traffic like? They say it's a ghost town. So I knew eventually that she was going to have to, you know, shut down the business. And she did. And I let her, I just let her go because I didn't want to add, you know, extra thing because she signed a three-year lease. And I didn't want to put, you know, extra stress on her. And I knew you ain't you don't have no money now. I don't think if I take you to court, you're going to magically come up with the other, you know, 22 months or 24 months in uh, rent payment. So I just let her go and try to take less of the burden off of her from all the other stuff that she paid for to build the place out. But that's you have to know your audience. You have to create a following. You have to do stuff. You just if you're good at doing hair, you can't just show up in any random city and say, oh, I'm good at doing hair and the people gonna show up. You have to pay for advertising. You have to get your name out there. You have to have brand recognition. You have to do things to make the business successful. You can't just put veteran on in the window and think all the veterans around the world gonna show up. there. You can't put black on in the window and think all the black people gonna show up there. That, that's not how it works. They're going to, everybody looks for quality and cost. If your quality is good, you can afford to charge people more. That's how it works. But if you're expensive, your quality is terrible, and your customer service is crap, you're going to have a ghost town and you just wasted your time and wasted your money. And you're going to be sleeping back on mom and them couch because you won't have any money. But I'm off my soapbox. Alex, you can take it away from there. No, all true. Um, I was thinking about uh, there's a cigar shop I go to uh, here in Lakeland um, and from time to time. And they told me their their story. And it's a it's a lot of sacrifice that they had to make, you know. Mm -hmm. And like you always say, it's easier to uh, buy revenue than create revenue. And their story, I mean, they. Uh, you know, they were still working their jobs. They uh, they had just opened up the shop. They sold their, they had like a Corvette. Uh, they sold their Corvette. Um, they were working like full time at the shop. They would go to work. They would sleep a couple hours, go to work, go back to the shop. 
And then they said like it was hard in the beginning too. Like one day they had only, they thought everything was going good. And then one day something had come up and then they only made like $63 for that day. And it just showed them like, you know, how hard it actually was. But eventually they got it up and running. The place is packed every single right. And And that's what it takes. I mean, but you see, they kept their jobs while, and they used their mm -hmm. jobs to fund that project. They made a lot of sacrifices of, hey, we can't go out. We need this money yeah. to build a business. We and had to go. Yeah. yeah. And they had to go and keep grinding it out. They told me the, because they started selling um, beer, beer and wine, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think they sell alcohol, but uh, they had to get their liquor license, like a alcohol license or whatever from the ATF or whatever. It's like $100,000, I think, is what they said to do that, you know. So there's a lot of capital they put into it. You know, they had to build a uh, reputation uh, different because in the cigar business, you have to build from what they were telling me, different relationships. And so there's different right. cigar manufacturers uh, like let's just say Davidoff is a really well-known brand it's a very good quality cigar and very few cigar shops sell their cigars because they don't have the relationship with that company and they actually built that relationship with them which is huge you know it's like it's like uh basically if someone were to launch a a product line and they eventually got into uh, walmart stores you know what i mean it's a it's a big it's a big deal for the cigar industry so there's a lot of you know relationship establishments uh, you know, they had to build connections, a lot of capital they had to put in, sacrificing uh, their time, sacrificing sleep, selling their, you know, their cherished car, you know, a bunch of stuff that they had to do to get it up off the ground. Right. And and that's how this, all, how long has this business been running now? Probably maybe about six years, six, seven years now. So it didn't they didn't crack the hurdle of, you know, the three year mark, mm -hmm. but it's very rare. It's a lot of small business that never do that. And the sacrifices that they made and the sacrifices lead to success. I always will say this. Success leaves clues. You said it. Sacrifice. Every time you hear somebody that's successful in something, they made sacrifices somewhere else, no matter if they're basketball players or whatnot. You don't, you do you really think that Kobe Bryant and LeBron James just sit at home, drink beer all day, and then show up on the court and drop 40? No. They sacrifice time and energy and effort to train when nobody else is watching to give you the product they have. They're not if if it was just simple as just sitting there doing nothing, then everybody in the NBA, NFL, and stuff like that would be making the same money as the biggest superstar. The people that put in the most effort gets the most success. Now, LeBron James, you know, he has media companies, he has restaurant companies, and all that other stuff. So do you really think he's sitting there partying uh, as soon as he get off work every day? No, he got business meetings. He got other things to do. All the stuff while people are not watching. But success leaves clues. If you start doing what successful people are doing, and they leave clues all around, but dedication, commitment are the two ones that people need to understand to make it happen no matter if it's a business or personal finance in general. Well, guys, with all that being said, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.